won the debate easily last night. I think he was very weak. He looked weak. He was whining. The president of the United States conducting himself the way he did, um, I think it was just a, a national embarrassment. The dust is just starting to settle on last night's U.S. presidential debate. It was a chaotic 90 minutes full of name-calling, personal jabs, interruptions, and lots of crosstalk. With emotions running so high, we wanted to dig further into what happened between the two candidates and the moderator. To do that, I'm joined by Mark Bowden. He's an expert in reading body language, co-founder of Truth Plane, and the author of Truth and Lies, What People Are Really Thinking. He's in Toronto. Hi, Mark. Great to see you again. Thanks for making some time. Hey there, Vashi. Great to be here. Okay. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so we have isolated uh, a few cl specific clips. Uh, we're going to play them, and then you're going to sort of explain what you took away from them as far as uh, body language is concerned. Let's start off with the first clip. This one captures the moment where Joe Biden kind of loses his cool and essentially tells the president to shut up. Let's watch that. You should go out and vote. So here's Biden in his kind of television evangelist mode. He's straight down the lens, straight down what we call the wheel plane, but then he gets interrupted. He carries on going. He's got that soft phone, uh, that soft um, tone to him. But now he's knocked off. This was a set piece for him. He knew how to deliver it. He was going to deliver it in that soft tone. He's been knocked off. He's getting angry. And then, you know, he calls him out. Uh, you know, relatively abusively, I would think, for most TV political debates. The question is, the question is, the radical left, will you who shut is up, your, man? Listen, who is Speaking of that, there was, there was abuse uh, go, going around <laughs> last night, if that's the way we're, we're characterizing it. The next clip captures the moment where Joe Biden calls Donald Trump's intelligence into question, which definitely seemed to get under the president's skin. Let's roll that one. He panicked. So there's a look for approval right at the start from Biden, where his eyebrows go up. But now he's gone into that evangelistic mode again. But now he's symmetrical. He's ah, and then he uses that word smart. And of course, that's a key word for Trump. So he's using one of the words that Trump likes to use, smart, smartest. And so really not a great idea to tread on the vocabulary because it's an easy one for Trump to pick up. And a lot more are going to die unless he gets a lot smarter, a lot quicker. So, Mr. President, did you use the word smart? Uh, so you said you went to Delaware State, but you forgot the name of your college. You didn't <laughs> go to so. Delaware State. You graduated either the lowest or almost the lowest in your class. Don't ever use the word smart with me. Don't ever use that word. So good start there, softer voice, evangelistic mode, right down the camera, but then tripped up a little bit by using one of Trump's key words, which instant he, ju he jumps on. Let me just quickly follow up before we play the next clip. That, that looking to the camera was definitely something that stuck out, I thought, with uh, Joe Biden's body language. What do you think that was aimed at doing, and, and uh, was it successful? Yeah, so it's aimed at connecting to the audience very, very directly. Not a technique that Trump was using. He was more interested in being in combat with anybody and everybody there to control it. Uh, certainly Biden is looking to control the audience and help them think in a certain way by quieting the voice, getting symmetrical and getting the attention down the camera lens there. Yeah, I think it absolutely worked for him. I guess if Trump hadn't been so aggressive and controlling of the whole debate. Okay, let's let's move into the third person who was in the third character of, of last night's debate. That's the moderator, Chris Wallace, yeah. who had a you know an immeasurably tough job trying to keep uh, the debate on track or even understandable because there was so much cross top talk. Rather, in this clip, he essentially kind of seems to be losing his patience with, with two contestants. Let's watch that with the two contestants. Yeah. No, I, I, the answer to the question is no. So yeah, the moderator trying to use moderation gestures. These are actually called moderator gestures, where you try and control the conversation, but it doesn't work for him. And the reason is it doesn't really work for him is that his moderator gestures gestures are too flimsy. They're not big enough. He's sitting down. He isn't even in a physical position where he can dominate this debate and cause people to do what he wants, to regulate people. No, I, sir. With a billion dollars, if you that don't get rid of it, you know what, you're, wait, not stop. true. You're, you're going to have, true. gentlemen, 
So his, his moderators or regulators are too flimsy, too flaccid. They're not big enough in the frame. You've got two other big characters who are doing bigger demonstrative gestures, especially Trump. He's a big guy. He fills up a lot of space. So he can moderate uh, or regulate a conversation by simple gestures that are small like this because he's got such a big frame, especially when he's standing up. This particular moderator, too flimsy, too small on that set. I think next debate, they should really think about standing up and being more physically present in that space in order to control these two, especially control Trump. OK, let, let's take one of those moments and, and get your take on this one. This is where Biden and Trump are sparring over Biden's son, Hunter. Let's take a look at that clip. In Moscow that is simply and various not other places. true. He my made son. A fortune. OK, my son. so he has to repeat son. Like my son, of, like my son, of, again, in order to moderate, in order to take control of the conversation. He had been quite symmetrical before this. And again, his evangelical tone and, and, and a very kind of passionate tone down the lens of the start of this. But then Trump pivots to his, his other son. He's not expecting that. He then goes asymmetrical with his gestures and also starts using his pen and pointing down the camera. At this point, we see anger, we do see disgust around this. I don't think it's anger or disgust around his son. I think it's anger and disgust around Trump. And I'm proud of him. But why I'm was he giving tens son. of millions All right. of dollars? But he wasn't giving right. tens of millions of dollars. That is totally, that's a totally discredited. But maybe he needed to avoid that use of a tool, use of a sharp pen at the audience here and direct it over to Trump. But his training has been to go down the camera in that set piece about his son formerly, his son that was in the military and the war hero idea. He got destabilized. He got unbalanced there. Again, Trump really kind of ruled that conversation. OK, one final one for you, Mark. This is, you know, definitely one of the, uh, the, the most, if not the most, newsworthy moment of the debate. That's when Chris Wallace, the moderator, asked Donald Trump, the president, to condemn white supremacists and white supremacy. Uh, let's play that clip and tell us what you, what you take away from the president's body language and, and behavior in that moment. I would say almost everything I see is from the left wing. OK, so we've got, I'm willing to do anything. I want to see peace. So again, that comes down his wheel plane. Uh, that seems quite firm that he wants to see peace there. I want you to notice how his elbows come out during this. He's quite assured that if they give a name, he's going to be able to handle this. So he asks for something specific around that. Uh, you know, who would you like me to condemn, he says. Um, gosh, that's quite biblical. Who would you like me to condemn? And his elbows come out, suggesting that he's ready for this. However, they, they say the Proud Boys, um, he says, Proud Boys, stand back, stand by, and we get a raise of the shoulder on stand back, stand by. Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacists and right like me to condemn? White Proud supremacists boys. and right Proud Proud boys. boys, stand back and stand by. That would suggest he's not so sure that is the message for them. There is some uncertainty around this. Now, whether this is uncertainty around has he given the right message, uh, is that a message he believes in, or he's managed to get himself cornered uh, here and trapped a little bit, I'm not sure we need to interview him further. But we'd want to interview him on the specifics of what do you mean by uh, stand back, mm -hmm. stand by? Is that a full condemnation, as you'd suggested it was going to be? So certainly uncertainty after the fact that he was very assured with those elbows there that he could handle this situation. Yeah, I think many, many people watching actually viewed it as the opposite of condemnation in the end. Uh, before I let you go, Mark, one, one final question. There are other debates. We've just received word that the commission is going to change a bit of the structure to try and deliver a different result in the second debate. If you were to offer one piece of advice to each of Donald Trump and Joe Biden where it concerns the way in which they express themselves, what would it be? Yeah, so I think you need to set up a structure where they're going to be more controllable. And therefore, I might get them sitting. 
I might get them sitting in a more conciliatory way, something where they can work together a little bit better rather than in opposition. And I might well get the moderator standing so that our moderator has more physical control of the situation and may be able to actually moderate them better. Look, these are called debates, but they're never really debates. We're looking for a fight and an argument, no matter how much we say afterwards, well, that was a bit extreme. We are looking for some entertainment here, but we do need the entertainment moderated and you need a system that will work for these characters and keep them in some kind of boundary during this. Gotcha. Okay, thanks, Mark. A pleasure as always. My pleasure as well. See you around. You bet. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.